Good evening. Welcome to Words to Live By. I'm Pastor Tolliver's Progressive Church of God in Christ. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you again for watching Words to Live By. Before we begin our session today, we'd like to begin with words of prayer. Our Father and our God, we're grateful to you for your manifold blessings. Thank you for how you watched over us and kept us, rebuked the enemy and given us life. Pray, O oh God, now that you'd open our understanding, give us an ear to hear, heart to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church order that we might live and grow thereby. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. We thank God again for those of you that are tuned in to watch Words to Live By. Our lesson text tonight comes to us from the 107th number of Psalms, beginning with verse 21 through verse number 27. We are reading, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for the wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in the great waters. These see the works of the Lord and the wonder of him in the deep. For he commandeth and raises up the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heavens. They go down again to their depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro, stagger like drunken men. They are at wit's end. I draw your attention especially to the final words, verse number 27. Simply state, they are at wit's end. For our subject today, we'd like you to consider these words. What do we do now? What do we do now? The Bible declared to, today that the people that had gone down to sea, gone down and saw the wonders of God in the deep, saw him in his majestic power and declared that they were at wit's end. They did not know what or how to deal with the situations and circumstances that surrounded them. As we look at it, as we look at it today, we are at wit's end. We don't know what to do. We fail to understand why God allows all of the chaos in the world. But you and I have this understanding, this intelligence given to us by God's word, that God is always present, and he understands what is going on from beginning to the end. Even when we don't know what to do, we should first begin by practicing what is exhorted to us in Psalms 46, verse 10, tells us, Be still, know that I am God. I know it's difficult to be still when you're in an uncomfortable position. You ever travel a long distance and there's a position in the car 
that they call the hump. That simply means the center of the seats where the hard knock is. And oftentimes when the car is loaded, someone has to sit on the hump. You and I sitting on the hump right now. It's uncomfortable to see our friends and our neighbors suffering, see our economy going down, our health issues that we are dealing with. All of that is uncomfortable. But if we just be still and know that he's God, understand that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. I love the book of Psalms. It is a book of hope, praise, and adoration given to our God, written by men and women who embraced occasions and situations in their lives that provoked thought that they decided to write down for you and I to read and to digest today. Let's walk up to the first verse Psalms 107 say, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good. His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. When we understand that God's mercy is something that we do not deserve, but we enjoy it because God loves us. We enjoy it because God desires to have fellowship with us. When he gets through with that admonition, he says, Who is supposed to say that? Say, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God redeemed you from the hand of the enemy. You ought to have something to say. I say, You ought to have something to say. You're asking, What do I do now? Give God praise. What do I do now? Thank him for what you have and the situation and circumstances that you're living with. What do I do now? I continue to trust in the God of my salvation. As we read on, it tells us what happened. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say who he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Gather them out of the lands from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. He found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. If we stand still long enough, we begin to understand that God is working it out. This is why I refer to the verse in Psalms 46, 10, Be still and know that I'm God. I was reading that verse and a thought came to mind that I remember reading some time ago that is a practice in the British naval uh, war machine that is called the steel. The steel. We've seen it many times on TV where in the older, older movies when the uh, ship was in danger, the captain would call to his side a young man with a whistle and they would whistle a pipe, they call it pipe, the sound throughout the vessel. And that sound was called the steel. And what it meant was that whatever was going on, whatever the people were doing, whatever uh, you were engaged in at that time, stop. Stand still and listen to what the captain have to say. Oh, we hear a whole lot of voices trying to tell us what's going on and when it's going to end and how long it's going to happen and who's going to suffer and why this is happening. We hear all sorts of voices. This is the time that we should be still and listen for the voice of God. Lord, help me today. When we do that, God will continue to lead and to guide us in the way he would have us.
to go. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way, found no city to dwell in, hunger and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. They cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Verse number seven gives us this intelligence. And he led, and he led, and he led them forth by the right way. He led them forth by the right way. Be careful what voice you are listening to. Be careful what information you are following. Allow God to lead you. And he have given you instructors and pastors and teachers that are grounded in the word that will tell you what you need to do now. I said, we'll tell you what you need to do now. So as we go through these lessons from time to time, we encourage you first and foremost to be a student of the word because the word of the Lord is like a lamp unto your feet and a light to your pathway. But you have to be studious in God's word and search the scripture. For in them you think you have eternal life. And Jesus declared that those were the ones that testified about him. If we want to know about the Lord, go to the book. Go to the book. When do we do this? Here is what will happen, or what should happen. Verse 8 records again uh, the, the admonition given in verse number 1. All oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness for his wonderful works to the children of men. When we learn to praise God in the situation that we are dealing with, things began to happen. God began to show himself mighty in our life. When we, when we listen to his word, the Bible says he will satisfy the longing soul. Do you have a desire for him? Do you want to know more about him? Do you want him in your life as your Lord and Savior? He satisfies the longing soul. Oh, I know they tell you cocaine is it. Alcohol is it. Various means of artificial stimulation that we use to get through the day. But when it wears off in the morning, you still have the trouble sitting at your door. But when you learn to turn it over to Jesus, he'll work it out. He satisfies the longing soul. He filleth the hungry soul with goodness. All right. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadows of death, being bound by afflictions and iron. Because they rebelled against the word of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. He's giving us the reason for many of the troubles that we are experiencing, many of the adversities that we are facing. He tells us what happened and what caused it. They rebelled against his word. It says like this in the book of Romans, when they knew God, they worship him not as God. You've got to believe God and worship him as God. And when you do that, God will come in and become involved in your life and the situation surrounding your life. So when they rebel and condemn the Most High, here's what happened. Therefore, he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there were none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. He saved them from their distresses. Isn't it wonderful that we have a loving God? God that is so full of mercy, love, and forgiveness. And even after we blow it, after we've fallen, after we've made the mistake, after we've committed the sin, 
he is still reaching out to us with the invitation to repent and be converted. God will come in if we will return to him. For he said, they cried to him in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands asunder. God will set you free. I said, God will set you free, regardless of what we think about what is going on. God will set you free if you allow him. One of the things I emphasize from time to time, the characteristics of our God, the one that created the heavens and the earth, spoke the world into existence, that God, all the power that took to hang the stars, placed the moon and the sun. So there is no doubting his power. And yet, with all of that power, he refuses to invade our privacy. And he will not come in without invitation. For he declared, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you open, I'll come in. Not that he does not have the ability to force his way in, but he wants a loving relationship with you and I. He wants you to know that he loves you, and he wants to know that you love him. And you do that simply by personally inviting him in. What do you do now? God, I'm a sinner. Need to be saved. This is what some of us need to do. Those of us are less than faithful. Need to pick up the slack. Become a bold in our representation of God and his presence in the earth today. For he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, break their bands asunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he had broken the gates of brass, cut the bars of iron in sunder. Oh, yes, oh, yes, God has been good. But we need to understand that God's goodness does not last or will not last beyond the grave. Our decision must be made while the blood is running warm in our vein. We need to contemplate, think about what God means to us. Oh, I know we are worried. Am I going to catch it? My loved one's going to catch it. I can't guarantee you anything in that, in that arena. The only thing that I can guarantee you is that God is in control. And I say from time to time, nothing takes him by surprise. He knew it before it happened. Oh, yes. So when we understand that, then our relationship to God grows stronger. Now, just as we addressed the mercies of God, as we addressed God's faithfulness to us, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we can alienate the God that loves us. And if we do it because of transgression. So we do it because of transgression. It says in verse 17, the fool, because of their transgression, because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Some of the things we are suffering, and I don't have a specific re reference to uh, the coronavirus, but some of the things in life that we suffer is the results of our own action. I'm sure that if you are a thinking person, understand that sin has always been present. Ever since the fall in the garden, 
man has had to deal with the presence of innate sin. Oh, yes. God has dealt with it on an individual level from time to time. Individuals were chastened by God. There were families were chastened by God. But there comes a time when a nation, hear me now, when a nation's laws begin to reflect the fact that I do not respect what God has to say about life. When a nation's law began to show God, I don't believe what you are saying, then God in turn turns against not just an individual, but against a nation. Uh, I say against a nation. Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. We need to answer the question, what do we do now? I would suggest to you the words of an old song that we sang years ago. Be refreshed and renewed in our hearts and mind. And they simply say, I'm going back to Jesus. I'm going back to Jesus. Going where the living waters flow. I hear my Savior calling. Repentance tears are falling. My heart is turned back to Jesus, and I must go. It's wonderful to understand that the, that the invitation is still out there. We still have time to embrace his mercies, but we need to know what to do. We need to understand that he is standing with outstretched arms. All day long he's waited and he's called, sought us. With loving kindness he's drawn us. What do you do now? Will you say yes? Will you say yes? If that is the answer, then all that is necessary is that you give your heart to God by confessing your sins, repenting and changing. He will come in and save you. Our lesson text gives us a classic example of man and his haughtiness. If you read the verses, the implication in the verses is that those that were selected were men that had done business in the sea. In other words, this was no strange place. This was no strange occurrence. They'd been there before. That was their livelihood. They did business in the sea. But this particular time, they got more than they bargained for. At this particular time, they got more than they bargained for. We oftentimes, we oftentimes think we can handle what life throws at us. But there will come a time that you'll get more than you bargained for. Because God is still in control. So those that did business by the sea, they went down there. Sure, if their business was by the great waters, they'd seen storms before, they'd experienced wind before. But the description of the storm given in this passage was so horrendous that the Bible declared that they were at wit's end. They didn't know what to do. Our governments throughout the world has performed, or rather uh, uh, formed, cadres of scientists try and understand and corral the coronavirus, something they've never experienced and never thought they would have to experience. But did you not know that God is still in control 
when we get through with all of our scientific knowledge. You'd be just like when they did age. They found a drug that not does not cure it. It simply reduces the effect. But the AIDS virus is still present in the world today. Sin will always be a part of human history. What we do about sin is what will determine our relationship to God. The church must not hide his head in the sand. We must declare that God has a hand in what is going on. To what extent, you don't know, and I don't know. But I do understand that God is in control of the world, and he knows what is happening. We have to understand there is a difference between foreknowledge and predestination. See, we would like to say God predestined this. That is not the case. He foreknew, but he did not predestine. It's like you and your car. You buy a tank of gas, and when you buy it, if you are aware, you know approximately how many miles you can drive. That's foreknowledge. You know approximately how many miles you can drive. Now, when you reach that number of miles and your car stopped, that's not because it was preordained that it stopped. It was because of foreknowledge. You did not put gas in your car to avoid the stoppage. Now, predestined is when you know when, where, and how it's going to stop. It's predestined. This car will stop at 8 Casa Vatone Place on May 22nd, 6 p.m. That's foreordained. Now, God has set some things in the world, and he's made us aware that if we do certain things, there will be certain repercussions. You cannot avoid God's law and expect to come away unscathed. Something in your life is going to be upset because you refuse God and God's admonition. So what do we do now? We go back to Jesus. Turn our face away from the things of the world that are calling us. Call on God. Let him fix it. Oh, yes. And when we do that, you will need to understand that God can reverse the curse. I said God can reverse the curse if we pray. Verse 35 says this. He turneth the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into a water spring. There he maketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city, a habitation. And sow the fields and plant the vineyards, which may yield fruit of increase. He blessed them also, so that they are multiplied greatly, Suffers not their cattle to decrease. In closing, the verses that I'd like to draw your attention to particularly is Psalms 107 verses 42 and 43. Simply says, the righteous shall see it and rejoice. All iniquity shall stop her mouth. Whoso is wise 
and will observe these things. Even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. I'm so glad God has given us this opportunity to observe his handiworks throughout the earth and cause us to understand. But for the goodness of the Lord, it is his mercies that we are not consumed. God has blessed us. We want to know now, what do we do now? How will we respond to what is transpiring? Will it cause us to pray? Will it cause us to study, seek God's face, cause us to be more loving, kind, tenderhearted toward one another? Or will we revert to our old practices? God is calling us to a higher level. And again, the question is, what will we do now? Thank you again. Trust this word has been a blessing to you as you make your decisions about life, understanding that everything in God's hand. Let us pray. Father God, again, we ask that you bless your word to the hearts of your people. Give us an ear to hear, heart to receive. Come in and give us what to do and how to do it that we might bring glory and honor to the name of our God. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, we thank you today. Thank you, Jesus. Touch now those that are under the influence of this dreaded disease. You're able to heal. Our scripture text tells us you sent your word and healed them. We ask for your healing virtue. In the name of Jesus, rebuke it now. Rebuke it now. Keep us well and healthy with a mind stayed on you. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask it and we thank you. Thank God. Amen. With your name on it, God is in the blessing business. Oh, yes, he is. But when I could not stand by myself, the Bible declared that he upholds.